Hey everyone, so I'm just getting back from the NAB convention in Las Vegas, but AI clearly does not care that I am jet lagged. We've got a lot of big news today and an exclusive. For one, Stable Diffusion 3 is out. There's a bit of a catch to that, but we are going to be able to take a look at how it stacks up. I've got a chat with Adobe answering some of the questions that you guys had in the comments of the last video about the new AI video generation features coming in Premiere. The 800 pound gorilla that is Microsoft has entered the AI avatar game and the results are super impressive. Plus, the first AI art esport competition was held, and I'm going to let you know all about that because I was a judge. Okay, lots to cover. Let's dive in. First up, after a pretty good amount of time being unstable, Stability AI looked to be headed in the right direction with the release of Stable Diffusion 3, the API at least. This is available for all developers and weights should be coming along fairly shortly. We've got two flavors for it, obviously Stable Diffusion 3 and Stable Diffusion Turbo. It's reported that Stable Diffusion 3 is extremely good at prompt understanding and generating text within images. We're gonna go through some image examples of SD3 in just a minute, but first I wanted to take a look at some interesting stuff that I dug up in the documentation. So aside from the standard text to image, image to image, uh, seed, negative prompt, you know, all the usual suspects, we will also have a creative upscaler that will upscale all the way up to 4K. We also have in painting and out painting, but here's where things get interesting because apparently we have search and replace. Search and replace is a specific version of in painting that does not require a mask. Instead, users can leverage a search prompt to identify an object in simple language to be replaced. So that's great news for anyone that hates fiddling around with masking tools. We also have a remove background built right in, maybe not the most mind blowing of features, but definitely a big time saver. Image to video, which obviously connects directly to stable diffusion video. And for those of you who do love your masking tools, we have image to image with a mask, which selectively modifies portions of an image using a mask. Uh, you know, normally you would do that via a text prompt. Apparently now you can do that with an image prompt as well. So that's pretty interesting. Of course, the important question is how does it look? And, you know, obviously the real test there is going to be when the model weights are released and, you know, users in the community can start putting it through its paces. The early examples of these models always do look very nice, but it's really when it gets into the hands of the community that that's where you're going to see like it really start to spank. That said, we do have a pretty great comparison of Stable Diffusion 3 versus Stable Diffusion XL via Emmanuel from Scenario. Scenario is a platform that I have previously taken a look at. I really like it a lot. Hopefully a deeper dive on it next week. Anyhow, here's an example that I think really showcases the improvements. An elderly mage character with flowing white White beard and robes adorned with celestial patterns, holding a staff topped with a glowing crystal orb, his eyes twinkling with wisdom and power accumulated over countless centuries. I mean, Gandalf, it's Gandalf, right? It's always Gandalf. While both images are very nice, the Stable Diffusion 3 version obviously is a lot crisper and sharper. In terms of prompt understanding, we're definitely getting more celestial patterns on the robes here, as opposed to the SDXL version. The staff with the crystal orb, obviously both had a little bit of a problem with. Uh, the SD3 version definitely looks a lot more like a staff. Uh, there's this problem at the top that you could probably in paint out, uh, whereas the SDXL version kind of looks like, I don't know, like a mystical lollipop. I will note that the SD3 version does seem to have some wacky fingers going on. We got one, two, three, four, plus five, and then maybe like an extra thumb. But I also don't cast spells like that, you know, Doctor Strange style. Maybe you need that extra finger. Another example of a desert tomb, we are definitely getting more details in the hieroglyphics on each of these pillars. The colors, composition, and overall like fog volumetric atmosphere definitely take the cake here uh, in the SD3 version over the SDXL one in this moonlit graveyard example. Another example here, a nimble forest elf character with green tinted skin and leaf like hair. I think definitely once again showcases the improvements of Stable Diffusion 3. The leaf like hair definitely plays a lot better in the Stable Diffusion 3 version. And I'm not necessarily bagging on it because they're two different aesthetic styles, but you know, the, the sort of character pose in the SDXL version is a little bit on the janky side. Here's another one trending towards photorealistic, a glossy sports motorcycle rendered in a high definition digital art style, perfect for inclusion in racing games or as a dynamic vehicle in an action adventure title. Uh, clearly the Stable Diffusion 3 version looks like, you know, it could be from a product shoot, whereas the 
the SDXL one, eh, it's a bit of a mess. I do appreciate that XL put like this hitch on the back of the motorcycle. This is someone who is committed to not paying the delivery fee on that washing machine they just bought. Stability.ai have also announced a new platform called Stable Assistant Beta. This is a quote, friendly chatbot where paying subscribers can access the latest models and generate images, write content, and help match photos to text through conversation. It's not available to the public yet, and it looks like it will have pricing plans from $9 a month up to $99 a month. If you haven't already, you can also sign up for a non-commercial license over at stability.ai. It is totally free. I'll keep you updated on what's happening with Stable Diffusion 3 as it develops. Moving on, as mentioned in my previous video, uh, kind of like on-site reporting about the announcement that Adobe made that generative AI video features would be integrated into Adobe Premiere. I wanted to try to track down someone from Adobe to get some more details about it and ask them some questions that you guys had raised up in the comments. To that, Kyle Gaselli, a senior director at Adobe, was kind enough to take a few moments off the show floor uh, and sit down with me and let me lob some questions at him. All right, so let's head back to Vegas and talk to Kyle. Hey, uh, so I'm here with Kyle uh, from Adobe, uh, and you guys had a pretty big uh, week here, or pretty big yesterday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So here at the NAB 2024 show, I think the narrative and the story about uh, Adobe this year is Gen AI and collaboration. Okay. So basically, if you know of Adobe and you've heard of the Firefly in image model, Firefly is the collection of uh, AI models, the family of models within Adobe, and we are hard at work on our video model that we will be announcing later this year. Okay. Uh, so just to dig into that for 10 seconds each, uh, makes it really obvious, right? Object removal, hey, we're in this scene right now. You don't want the A behind us. Let's get rid of that and replace it with something else. Generative fill with all these other slats, right? Uh, object addition, let's say you wanted to add a extra set dressing behind us. You want a little plant action here. Let's add something like that just with a text prompt. Mm -hmm. Generative extend, we all know like trying to make our edit match our, the, the beat of the music. We want that, that clip to end on that beat or that dialogue to end on that beat. How do we uh, generate additional frames from the existing clip, kind of forecasting what it would be if we had a few more seconds. So right. we think that that's really cool. And that's both video and audio so you can match a uh, room tone if you need to, to kind of keep that going oh, as okay. well. But what's exciting is, you, if you know Adobe, you know that we have an open ecosystem. Right. So if Premiere, After Effects, what we've got going on there is third-party plugins today. We know that we're gonna serve the broadest use case of customer needs, mm -hmm. but there are gonna be players who give you really good depth within a certain niche. For sure. And we think that that same concept is gonna play out in AI. That there may be models that work super well for a particular instance that our customers prefer. And so we wanna give those customers choice in their workflows. So we have announced early explorations with uh, the big video AI model providers today like OpenAI, Sora Model, Runway ML, and Pika, and early explorations of how that might work inside of Premiere Pro. Will Firefly be available outside of Premiere, for Firefly for video? Will it have its own standalone platform, basically? That's a great question. So we do have kind of a, a, an ideation environment uh, digitally on Adobe.com. So there's a Firefly uh, page on Adobe.com where you can start to play around with all of our image model stuff as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. we, we do intend to bring some of the video model stuff to that playground as well. It's a great place for us to get feedback from the community without having to download the desktop app. Um, so yes, mm -hmm. uh, but I still think contained within the Adobe ecosystem. Gotcha, that makes sense. In the like uh, clip extensions, like that is just a straight extend. You don't necessarily have control over uh, what your output is going to be or what it's going to extend. Like there wasn't a prompting yet, or is that thought about? I think all of the UI and so what I just want to mention, everything that you saw in that sizzle reel yeah. was generated by our models today and they're only going to get better, mm -hmm. right? Um, the level of granularity and control not yet determined, but I will tell you things have gotten better over time. Mm -hmm. uh, just with our image model as well, we've got um, uh, some some exciting stuff coming there as well. More control. I think yeah. what we launch with is like broadest use case, and then we want to create more finer and finer control for our users. So more to come there. In the sizzle reel, there was a little bit of um, a tag that was like uh, for personal use only. That's actually a good point. It's something I do want to mention. So again, we intend for the Firefly video model to continue to be commercially safe. Mm -hmm. With third-party models, we're not making any claims about the commercial safety of those models. However, everything that goes through the Adobe tool set will get content credentials attached, which gives, it's like, a, content yeah. credentials are like a nutrition label that tell you, was this entire piece of media AI generated? Was it just modified a little bit? Which model was used in the generation of that? And so we do intend for third-party models that go through uh, Premiere's tools to attach those content credentials as well so the users who are viewing that media know how it was generated. 
Um, and obviously anything that's generated through Firefly is going to match the output resolution of whatever your project setting is as well. That's a great point. Yeah. I think we intend to give uh, our editors the quality that they need. Mm -hmm. uh, no comment yet on what we're committed to from a resolution perspective. There have been questions about how individual controls within Runway, such as Runway's really great motion brush. Uh, Pika has a suite of controls that, uh, you know, zooming in and out and camera controls. Is that going to be in play? My, my speculation was that my hope and like, uh, and I was throwing it out there as a Hail Mary, is that there might be in the future at some point some kind of Adobe Dynamic Link system that goes back and forth where you can generate within uh, Premiere and then head over to Gen 2 to kind of, ah, like, you know. Yeah. Too early to say on those yeah. workflows. Um, I, did, I do want to mention, uh, a couple weeks back on our social channels, we did do a sneak of the dubbing and lip sync research that we have going on with our team. So definitely check that out. I definitely will, yeah. Yeah, of course, I know you can't answer, but everybody's like, like <laughs> do we get Sora on day one? Are we getting Sora on day one? So, so no comment on that. Early explorations. Uh -huh. uh, I know everyone's excited. I don't know how much you can say. Is there AI generated stuff or Gen AI tools coming up for After Effects? Is is After Effects just kind of on its own, or does a lot of that get integrated into Premiere? That's a great question. I would say we are actually leveraging the existing technology and uh, some of the research models that we have to bring uh, uh, object selection and rotoscoping the best of breed across all of our platforms. We are going to start with Premiere. Okay. And what you did see in the sneak was smart masking that we have right. to uh, support object removal. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to say we can't have smart masking without some improved um, manual masking tools with inside Premiere. Mm -hmm. So we are hard at work bringing both smart masking and improved manual masking into Premiere. Mm -hmm. So obviously a lot of customers today rely on those capabilities in After Effects. We're hoping to bring a lot more of them into Premiere to make your workflow as seamless as possible, as focused in on Premiere as it can be. And we're back. And you didn't even have to take an Uber to the airport. But did you catch the part there where Kyle mentioned that there was going to be generative audio along with your clip extensions? It's pretty fascinating. It's something that I had not heard mentioned anywhere else. Once again, my thanks to Kyle for sitting down. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any more questions. I'm sure you do. I'm starting to build a little roster of Adobe contacts, so uh, I might be able to reach out and get some information for us. Moving on, Microsoft have entered the AI avatar arms race with Vasa One, lifelike audio-driven talking faces generated in real time. This one is interesting and differs from, say, HeyGen's model in that it is audio-driven as opposed to text-based. Vasa One has some very impressive lip sync, but also captures a large spectrum of facial nuances and natural head motions that contribute to the perception and authenticity of liveliness. Let's take a look at Vasa One in action here. As a quick note, all of these characters are AI generated either by StyleGAN 2 or Dolly 3. And the video is being generated solely off that one image. So, you know, sometimes nothing happens and sometimes everything happens all at once and you just gotta deal with it. And it's also just strange to both be extremely worried about different things and have your anxiety levels like peak to the highest they've ever been. So that is really impressive. And I think very much does go to show how much more like natural and realistic things feel when they're driven by actual recorded audio as opposed to, you know, text to speech. Let's take a look at another example. This one from a man with a distinguished accent. The first thing we need to look at is the letter H. So the sound at the beginning. It depends what country you're from, but many native languages have a problem with um, putting too much tightness in the throat and it can become more of a ha sound. Very impressive. And while we're here, I just want to mention that it is Z, it is not Z, but we also do not talk about the Z word. So one thing I was really impressed with in the first example is when the character says my anxiety levels peaked. Uh, let's take a look at it here real quick. Your anxiety levels like peak. Vasa hits that with a fairly natural facial expression. But as the eyes kind of pop there, it kind of starts to move into a creepy, you know that scene in Lord of the Rings when Bilbo wants the ring? Yeah, it kind of looks like that. The other two things is that generally the head movement I feel is actually pretty good, except from time to time, it kind of makes these weird like jerking movements, almost like there are frames missing. Uh, that and the hair doesn't actually track as the head is moving back and forth. But it is just taken from one image and one image that is AI generated on top of it. Another really interesting aspect of Vasa One is that you actually have camera controls within it and you can actually text prompt within it as well. So yeah, you can actually control the pitch, yaw, roll, X, Y, and Z axes of your you know, virtual camera on your 
virtual AI avatar. On the plus side, this is a Microsoft product. So, you know, maybe you'll be able to use it in your next Teams meeting when Ted is talking, you can just prompt in nodding like I care. Writing out the first AI art eSport competition uh, was recently held and I was a judge. This was put together by Caleb and Shelby over at Creative Refuge. And yeah, it was just a ton of fun. The game aspect of it was, I mean, you can kind of think of it as Pictionary. The prompts were written on note cards by the audience and then randomly selected by the judges. Uh, and then the contestants had one minute to utilize Leonardo.ai's real-time drawing tool to generate up an image of that prompt. It was surprisingly more nail-biting and exciting than I could have possibly imagined. If you've used Leonardo's real-time canvas before, you'll know that like even a single brush stroke can alter your composition entirely. So there were a few legitimate like coming up from behind photo finishes. Overall, it was a really fun evening, but even more than that, I think illustrated that there is a tremendous amount of potential for community events based around this technology. I'm sure that the Creative Refuge game will have a full rundown of the event. So, you know, head over to their channel to check it out. In the meantime, I am going to go get some sleep. Vegas is exhausting. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.